Hi YouTube family, Lisa A. Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I'm really hoping today that this video may be able to help you have a breakthrough in your thinking process. Um, I received a really interesting email from a YouTube viewer asking me about obsessive thinking, and she has come to the realization that she's codependent and that the way she was brought up is, is why she's codependent. So she's understanding that she was downloaded with information that was false, that caused her to doubt herself, doubt her worth, and now as an adult, she's attracted people into her experience that mimic that vibration of mom and dad, and who treat her very similarly to the way that she was treated in childhood. So she's beginning to understand that the way that she was taught to think about herself has impacted her as an adult and the same downloaded information keeps replaying in her mental field. Whether she's aware of it, sometimes she is, that, wow, I don't think that I'm enough. Like, oh, I don't deserve that. Well, everybody, you know, who has the right perfect relationship? Why should I have the perfect relationship? You know, who's, who really has the right to want everything? No one really is that happy. So sometimes, sometimes we're aware of those thoughts but most of the time we're not. And so, and also because we were never taught that we had a right to be happy, we're not downloaded with that information as adults. So we don't understand that we're really, our agenda is not to be happy. In order for your agenda to be happy, you would have to know and understand that you had a right to be happy. Now, if your childhood was void of that type of downloaded information, in other words, if everywhere you looked in your life people were miserable, you've been downloaded with that information. Your brain doesn't know that it has a right to be happy or it has a right to seek happiness or that it's even possible that people are happy. If you don't have if you have not been downloaded with that, that idea, then your brain doesn't know to reach for that idea. You know, let's say you have a shed and you have a hedge trimmer in that shed and you have a shovel. Well, you want to rake the grass, but you only have a hedge trimmer and a shovel to play with. If you don't have a rake in that shed and you've never seen anyone use a rake, you don't know that you're supposed to use a rake to rake the grass. You don't know that because it's void of your experience. So imagine that the shed is your subconscious mind. And if your parents only gave you a hedge trimmer and a shovel to play with, you don't know there's such a thing as a rake or a lawnmower. You don't know that. How could you ever know that? That's not your fault. That's not your fault. If you don't think about being happy or question whether or not you have a right to be happy. That's not your fault. If, if the people in your life were never happy, that is not your fault. Our childhood brains or our brains from childhood were computers and they were downloaded with information that we received from our environment. Now, we can't, we don't know how to access other ideas. We don't know that as children. We have no idea, so it's not our fault. I think I've made that point. Excuse me if it's too much. Now, what happens is as we grow up and we begin to, to wake up and become aware that we were codependent and that the reason that we are worried about what people think about us and the reason we're in relationships that are really going nowhere. I mean, when you're in a codependent relationship, you never get past point A, ever, ever. And if you've attracted another, an, well, if you've attracted a narcissist into your life, covert, overt, passive aggressive, what have you, an alcoholic, a drug addict, whatever, a gambler, then what will happen is you as the codependent will raise an issue, discuss it, and a couple of things will happen. The narcissist will get really angry, try to shut you down and try to convince you that you're crazy and that your feelings don't matter. Or if they think you're really serious and you start to put your foot down, 
what the game they'll play is, oh, I'm sorry. No, really, I'm sorry. I heard you this time. I really, really heard you this time. And then the codependent will drop their guard and think, oh, finally I'm getting to point B. But before long, before long, maybe a week, sometimes just a few hours, you're back at point A again. It is freaking exhausting. Uh, sometimes people, when you're codependent, you start waking up and you, you start you know, talking to your partner about, hey, this is what's going on. I don't like it. Sometimes they threaten to commit suicide. Um, that happened in my own family. And um, my brother-in-law actually did commit suicide. Um, my sister's husband, very codependent dynamic. And um, she was sick of the dynamic and woke up after about 20-something odd years and he could not handle it. And uh, it, it, in my opinion, it wasn't handled the way it should have been. And he ended up killing himself. And it was devastating. At the end of the day, however, my sister cannot be held responsible for his choices. And he transferred a lot of his pain onto his children, which is very, very sad. And um, our family will always be forever, ever affected by it. Uh, but in my opinion, the true cause of his death was, death was codependency because he could not imagine, imagine being able to live his life without my sister. And so that relationship had gone really, really too far, in my opinion. Um, and uh, she's doing better, my sister, but it's, it's, it, it is life-changing for sure. Um, I still come back to if you're dealing with someone who threatens to commit suicide because you no longer need to or want to participate in a relationship that is draining you, um, dear ones, that's tough, but the reality is that you're not responsible for someone else's choices. And while certainly situations can be, can be handled gently, the end of the day, we are not responsible for someone else's choices. And unfortunately, what happens, I know in my situation, when I was going through my divorce, I was dying. Well, before I was getting my divorce, I was dying, like physically dying. And my ex-husband was clueless. You know, in my opinion, he was a, a covert narcissist, passive aggressive, and refused to see what I was saying. And as long as I just stayed there, as long as I was in the kitchen when he came home, and long, as long as I was in bed when he went to bed, he was happy. But I was dying. I was dying. And I'm, I'm convinced that if I didn't leave, I would have died of some awful disease. I just know it. And so that the reason I bring that up is because for those of us who are in relationships with people who threaten to commit suicide, um, it really comes, we're dying. Like the person who's aware that the relationship is empty is dying. And then, so the, the way I looked at it is if I, if I don't, change then I'm going to die and if I do change and I bring my family through this horrendous war that ensues and my ex-husband ends up hurting himself god forbid you know I hate to say it but one of us one of us was one of us was going to suffer um either way I was suffering silently and when I brought my, my feelings to the surface, it was, it, was, it was terrifying. And yes, he began to suffer because he was finally seeing that I wasn't going to be controlled by this codependent dynamic anymore. And so I rolled the dice. I really believe firmly that I did the right thing. Even if my ex-husband had done something unfortunate, I still believe I did the right thing because I taught my children how to live their own life and make their own choices and take responsibility for their own happiness and not to be controlled by the moods and the opinions and, and the, the words of another person and to just live their life truthfully and honestly. And so even if something had happened, I still stand by my decision to, to get a divorce and, and live an authentic life because that's how I became my light body. That's how I became enlightened and that's how I became who I am in terms of a life coach. That's how, how I. That's the. That's how I became the mom that I am, and the new wife that I am, and the friend that I am. And so, that's just my personal, personal feeling on leaving a codependent relationship and confronting a narcissist who 
uses the threat of suicide to keep you stuck. Now, when you, getting back to this email, when you begin to understand that you were codependent and you're coming through the veil and you start to assert boundaries, you start to make the connections like, okay, she's in my life because she reminds me of my mom and I'm used to taking care of people and trying to make people feel good. So, and she's taking advantage of me, but I'm letting her take advantage of me. Okay. So now I have to pull back. Sometimes what happens is you'll notice, and in, in, the, in the case of the person who wrote me this morning, the viewer who wrote me this morning, her question was really, what do I do with all the, these obsessive thoughts? Now that I'm beginning to assert boundaries, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm overeating, overspending, and my thoughts are very compulsive and obsessive, and I'm not used to that. So the first thing we have to do is understand what's going on on an energetic and a mental level in terms of the mental field. Energetically, well, let's go, let's do mental field first. Mentally, when we begin to put up boundaries, what we have to appreciate is that our brain is used to flowing its focus in a direction that is outside of us. So the energy is used to be go going that way or outside of us that way. When you start asserting boundaries, what happens is the energy is beginning to come, is staying inside. And the brain really hasn't developed the neural wiring yet to know how to deal with this sudden focus or this lack of focus. It doesn't know what to do with it yet. When you're raised to be hypervigilant and your brain is programmed to look outside of you, and then all of a sudden you go, whoa, well, wait a minute. Higher consciousness says that's dysfunctional. Higher consciousness says, like Simon says, higher consciousness says, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to obsess about people. I don't want to be the person bringing all the coffee to the damn office every morning. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the friend that's watching all the kids every Friday night so everybody else can have a good time. I don't want to be the friend cleaning out the closets. I don't want to be that person. I'm done. Now, what will happen is, you put up what you put up a boundary and then suddenly your brain is like, well, what do I think about now? What do I think about now? What do I do with all these thoughts? Where do I put this focus? And so what the brain begins to do is it begins to hold on to the mental processes or let's look at them as clouds. Whatever mental clouds are floating through the mental field, the brain will glom onto them. So we all have to eat, right? And so what will happen is the brain's used to focusing out here suddenly a lot more focus is inside or there's a lack of focus being paid to outside so now all of a sudden there's like this space this this awareness of space within within our own mental field now the brain is used to attaching or obsessing about someone else so now what will happen is whatever cloud you have floating around in your mental field the brain will attach to that cloud and begin obsessing about that cloud or that that thought it's very normal. I mean, that's what the brain does. Your brain's not doing anything it's not supposed to be doing. Your brain's being is only doing what it's been taught to do. Obsess about obsess. Obsess about what? If you're a codependent and you've been downloaded with faulty information like worry about what the neighbors think, then you're used to obsessing about what other people think. You put up a boundary and say, I'm gonna cut that narcissist out of my life, I'm gonna push her away a little bit, I'm gonna put put him away, I'm not calling I'm not returning that phone call. You have to understand. Your brain is used to attaching and obsessing about something. Now, let's talk about the mental field. I think all too often, people think they're supposed to be paying attention to every cloud or every thought that runs through the mental field. No, dear ones, no. No. You have to understand that the mental field is sort of like the sky. And the sky's job, if you will is to hold clouds and to hold birds, right? Or airplanes. Hot hot, you know, hot air balloons. That's what that's what you see in the sky. So that's the job of the sky. Let's just put it that way. Now, the mental field is a field if you will that is supposed to be able to hold thought processes. The mental field isn't thinking no more than the sky is creating the clouds or no more than the sky is creating the bird or no more than the sky is creating the airplane. No. The mental field holds thoughts. So the mental field is able 
to hold a thought in its mental field, sort of like a cloud is able to be held in the sky. And we can look up at the sky and look at the cloud. It is the same, same thing when it comes to the mental field. In the mental field, we can have a thought, which is like a cloud, float by. Now consciousness, control, and as you become more and more awake and more and more aware and more and more enlightened, you begin to understand that you have a choice. You don't have to attach to that thought that's floating by in the mental field. You don't. If you are not thinking about the thoughts that are in the mental field, then they're not your thoughts. No. No, 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 no. They might be downloaded information from when you were two. Remember, the brain forgets nothing. The brain remembers your experiences in utero have been, have been registered in the subconscious mind. Your experiences during birth have been registered in the subconscious mind. Your experiences at birth, you know, you, you leaving this beautiful warm womb and being shoved down this very tight constricted birth canal and, and being born to this cold atmosphere, getting smacked on your little ass, you know, having your nose suctioned. That's horrible to do in a newborn baby. That's ridiculous. But all that information is downloaded into, into the subconscious mind. Now, the reason I bring this stuff up is because when you become a true master of your reality, you learn to master your mind. Now, in order to master your mind and kick codependency in the ass, you must understand that your thought, if you're not deliberately thinking your thoughts, then what's showing up in the mental field is a product of the subconscious mind. It's sort of like if I don't understand that I'm supposed to use a rake to rake the grass and I don't go to Home Depot to buy a rake and I don't put a rake in my shed, then I'm never going to be able to use that rake. So just like me choosing to put a rake in my shed that's and not using the shovel that was there, that's like me choosing what to think for the day. So what does this look like, you know, and that's what I love to do. I, and, and, and obviously, based on the emails I get and the comments that I get in the comment section of YouTube, um, it seems that what you, you, what, what you viewers are appreciating is the examples that I give. How to apply this knowledge to everyday life. And so what I want you to understand is that I chose to buy a rake. I chose to buy a lawnmower. I chose to buy a hedge trimmer. And though now I choose to put those tools in my shed. That is the same thing as waking up and saying, I'm not paying attention to the tools that are in my shed because I didn't put them there. I'm not dealing with that silly hedge trimmer. I'm not dealing with that. You know, I'm not dealing with that shovel. I'm not dealing with that. I didn't put, that's an old, that, those are old tools. Somebody else put them in the shed. I'm going to deal just with my rake and my lawnmower. That's what I'm going to play with today. Those are now same thing with the mental field. You know what I teach in my teleclass, and I will be coming to California soon. That'll be my first stop. I'm going to teach this live in a seminar. And what I teach is you need desire, you need to be intentful, you need discipline. You cannot take care of an acre of land and have it look pristine day after day unless you have the desire to do it, unless you're intentful, and, and, and unless you're disciplined to do it. It's not going to happen. So, and it's the same thing with um, reprogramming your mind and uploading new information. We've been downloaded with some corrupt stuff. That, now, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, it's there. But what we can, there's nothing we can do about what's there because the brain doesn't have a delete button. But the brain is a computer, and we can upload whatever information we want. But you have to desire to upload, you have to have the intent to upload, and you have to have the dis discipline to upload. So just like if I was training for a marathon and I wanted to run the New York City Marathon, and trust me, I don't. I have no desire to run a marathon whatsoever. But let's say I did. If I wanted to run the New York City Marathon, I would have to have desire, intent, and I would have to be disciplined. And certainly, if I every day I trained and I did my cardio and I did my weight training, then certainly I would be ready for this marathon a lot sooner 
than if I just did it haphazardly. So it really is up to you, dear ones. Depending on how miserable you are and how how close to rock bottom you are, and God bless those 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 of you, those precious souls, you're all precious souls. We all are precious souls. But those of you who write me and tell me about how how you didn't want to live anymore until you started watching these videos, and that these videos really brought you hope, you have no idea. It it makes me feel like I have wings. It makes me feel like all the pain that I've ever been through was for a reason. I, at 12 years old, was very close to pulling a trigger, my dad's pistol. That's how miserable I was, and that's how hopeless I was. And to know that all of that pain um, has, has ha I've been able to turn it around and make something beautiful out of it, and it's inspiring others on this planet to come into love and light. Is just it's just incredible. It I mean it it makes me want to get up in the morning. Really, it's just awesome. We have to understand, dear ones, that we can change, and that the brain has been downloaded, and we've got to understand it's just data. It's just data. So, for the purpose of this video, what I want you to understand is that the mental field is simply a field. It's like you know you have football players on a field. And so, and you can pick and choose what players play what. You can pick and choose what thoughts you want to exist in your mental field. The challenge that you will have is learning to sit back and deciphering what thoughts are yours, what thoughts are being deliberately thought by you, and what thoughts are the product of downloading and programming and brainwashing. The reason that I say start your day every day with a journal and intent do a meditation to quiet the mind. Then write a goal list. This is all this information that I'm giving you right here right now is on or in these videos on my channel. You need to decide what you're going to think. What I suggest playing with this is that I want you to imagine that your thoughts, you have to choose, let's say five things to think about today. And no matter what happens in your experience, every time you hear a thought like a, a cloud come through your mind, and it isn't, it has nothing to do with one of, one of the five things that you're choosing to think about, then let it go. You will feel like the ringmaster in Barnum and Bailey's circus. Like, I'm not kidding. You have that much control. So let's say today I want to think about... Um, I want to think about um, possibly, I don't know, uh, organizing my basement. So, so there's a lot of things that I can think about when it comes to organizing my basement. And I want to think about getting my car um, inspected. And I, I need to get to, um, figure out how, what menu I'm going to have for the next brunch that I'm going to have with my girlfriends. And then I have to think about when I'm going to get my daughter to the financial aid office for college. And the fifth thing I'm going to think about is my seminar. And so what I would do, what I, especially in the beginning, to teach myself how to take control over my mental field, was I would keep a journal with me. Or at the very minimum, I would take an envelope and I would write five things on the back of the envelope. And I knew that I could only think about those five things. I could think about anything that had to do with those five issues. And when I felt my mind dropping and becoming a little bit unconscious. Now remember, consciousness has levels. So, so you might be completely conscious, like right now listening to my video, and then you get in your car, and then your conscious, your ability to stay completely focused begins to drop. That's normal. That's what the brain does. You're not crazy because that happens. And what happens is when, you, when your consciousness drops, when you're not really, really intentful about what you're thinking about, what shows up? All the crap, all the gook from the subconscious mind begins because that's the job of the mental field. The job of the mental field is to carry mental thoughts. Now, your job is when you notice that you're thinking about something that is not on your list, push it away or let it float away. Say, no, 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 nope, 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 nope. I am supposed to be flowing my energy towards bop, 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 and bop. Let that go. Dear one, you do that for like 30 days, you will have learned what it feels like to be a creator. You first, before you can create deliberately and be, begin attracting into your experiences the things that you really want, 
you first have to learn how to take control over the mental field. Now, we have been taught in this country, probably worldwide, that if there's something wrong with obsessive thinking, what's wrong with being obsessive thinking is that we haven't taught people what obsessive thinking is. And we haven't taught people how to think outside of the obsessive thinking. So if people feel jacked up because they're having obsessive thoughts, that's going to create anxiety. And that's going to kick out adrenaline. And that's going to kick out cortisol. And then all the bells and whistles are going to go off. And then we're going to feel anxious because we can't control our thoughts. And the more you try not to think about something, the more you think about that something. And that's why I say we have to calm the system down. We have to quiet people's souls. We have to quiet people's hearts and tell them, ain't nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's, for the most part, we're, we're people who have been downloaded with very bad information, who feel bad about ourselves, who have been labeled, and who now think that we're crazy, so now we feel guilty. And how do you, how do you come into alignment with, with your true purpose if you're beating yourself up? So we have to really learn to be relaxed, really, really relaxed, take some pressure off of us, Understand that we have been victimized. Understand that our brain is a computer that's been downloaded. And then just start playing with the idea that we really can upload our own information. But we need to be taught how to do that, dear one. We need to be taught how to do that. So for the next you know, few days, what I want you to do is practice deliberately thinking about five, five things that you absolutely want to think about. And now anytime something else, some other thought comes into your mental field, you want to just look at it and say, I didn't invite you here. Like you just came up from the subconscious mind. Got to let you go. What will happen then is, and addressing the person who wrote me on, on um, YouTube, in terms of obsessing, when you are flowing your emotions and you are flowing your, your focus deliberately, you obsess less about food and shopping because you've taken, you've taken control over that energy and that, that energy stream. If you take your attention away from others, then your brain isn't going to want to know isn't going to know what to do with that sudden focus that isn't being out of focus. And so it will begin to attach to whatever is coming up into the mental field, whatever's showing up in the sky, then the, the 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 your focus is going to be like a hand that's coming from the ground and holding on to the food and holding on to shopping and holding on to this and holding on to that, holding on to television, holding on whatever. So what I'm saying is take control over your focus, especially when you start peeling back from narcissistic relationships and you start worrying about yourself for a change. Start choosing your own thoughts. It works. It works. Let me know what you think. Please, I'm really, really curious to see how you guys do with this. This, like, this totally changed my life. I look forward to hearing from you. And remember, the goal is love and light. The reason we want to transcend is not to punish a narcissist or not to punish our parents. No, 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 no. That's not the agenda. The agenda is to come into alignment with our purpose and our truth and to let go of others in love and light and to understand that, the, you know, in my opinion, narcissists show up because they're mirroring our internal experience. So what I mean by that, when I am blind to myself, I attract people who are blind to me. That's not their fault. That's, not, that's their personality, that, that's their character, but it's not their fault they're in my experience. I had a co-creative part in that by default, by default. Now, does that mean narcissists should take advantage of us and should be mean? No, but certainly what we have to do is understand that one, once, when, blah, 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 when, we, when we begin to listen to our own self, then we stop attracting narcissists. When we begin to not play the one-up game, when we begin to tell our narcissist, you know what, I'm just, I don't feel good. I just, I don't want to talk to you right now. Then they lose their interest in us. Big time. Big time. So there are a lot, there's a lot more. I could do another 30-minute video, go right into it, but I won't. I won't. I'll stop it here. Um, and so, again, dear ones, it's all about coming into love and light and being able to let go of people in love and light and ascending into new 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 vibrational frequencies and raising our vibrational vibrational frequency loving ourselves having compassion for the self and then um, resonating on a level that we're able to attract people of a similar vibrational frequency 
who are empathetic, who are compassionate, and who want to love love you the way you want to love them, and whose agenda it is to grow. There we go. When we grow, we're able to send love and light out into this world, and then we change the world one heart at a time, one mind at a time. It's lovely, dear ones. Let me know what you think. Bye.